it really begs it begs the question of who and what truly is or was the Amhara um, identity, since many of the well-known um, and historic figures who are considered to be Amhara actually have Oromo or before they would call it so-called Gala, but Oromo blood and Oromo bloodlines, including His Imperial Majesty. So, so this really asks the question, um, how did this divide and conquer, this, this division between them, how did this, um, let it, how did this division between them, how did this division even um, first come about? And I, I believe that's because the Europeans recognized you know, the white people who, who came there and were able to do research and find out who's who and what's what, they recognized the strength of this, of this people, you know, of, of this covenant, this Kalakidan, that has been often called either Tigray, Amhara, but more in the southern regions, the Amhara. You know what I'm saying? But it's important for us, I think, to understand that Amhara in spirit and in truth Amhara, Miskana Amhara is not a is not a tribe, as we will call a tribe. You understand that Amhara is a Silkane. It is a civilization. You understand? So when we talk about civilization, oftentimes we'll think about um like Anglo European or like Roman civilization. We normally wouldn't think, you know, we normally wouldn't think about really Ethiopian civilization in those terms in that light. But that's exactly the problem with the Western, you know, the Western white Gentile mind and many of us who are still half civilized. You see, we're half civilized. We're not fully civilized. And I'm, I'm taking that as a play on the nation of Islam and the 5% of teachings when it talks about those who are half civilized and it actually gives a definition of those who are half civilized for example Rastafari you understand most Rastas think that Rastafari means head creator that is half civilized those Rastafari who know that Rastafari doesn't mean half creator but that's only half true or head creator you understand because Ras means head or self, and tethari means the one to be reverenced or the one to be respected. In a, in a metaphysical interpretation, you could say even one to be fruitful, which then even links it more to the rosh tiferet, when we look at the Hebrew, to the rosh tiferet. Now, why is this important? This, this all connects with one unified field. It all connects with one reality. This is just one aspect of one reality. Because when we look at Tiferet, what's interesting about Tiferet, and we need to understand this, and this is what we want to touch on, um, L-O-J. In other words, the symbology that's inherent in L-O-J, and we wanted to put this forward, you know, so one can understand that, spiritually speaking, there is a consciousness that has been directing I and I, you understand, in the work of the King of Kings and his Christ, you understand, and this particular consciousness is not random. It may seem as though it is, you know, we're talking about this, we're talking about that. So at least we have an opportunity now to, you know, give you all these updates that can hopefully address certain timely questions that ones and ones have. You understand when we have the whiteboard here, you understand, if we need to go through this or we have the other ability to make videos using, you know, different type of presentation, um, different type of presentation formats, different type of presentation schemes. So when we look at LOJ, and, and we're talking symbolic, let's, let's at least begin to put this up here. You understand, we're talking about symbolic logic, right? Symbolic logic. Let's take you have L, you have O, and you have J, right? L O J. Now we have to look at this hieroglyphically 
Let's look at LOJ hieroglyphically. If we look at LOJ hieroglyphically, what do you see? Now, remember, we just touched on Aras Teferi, you understand, the true meaning, the head to be reverenced, the head to be respected. But in the half-civilized way, ones will say Rastafari means head creator because ones and ones have to learn the royal and hard language. We have to learn our language. So somehow along the way, um, um, uh, Teferi, you understand, got confused with Fetari. Fetari, that ah is the key, is the key difference. That ah is the key difference. But ones and ones should not so much blame themselves because some things we hear from other people and they, they kind of get passed on to us. You understand? But we do have the responsibility, you understand, to, to study, you understand, and show ourselves approved and to learn the truth and to, and to test these things that whether I and I teach or others teach or if you hear something, to really find out what the true value is so you're not carrying something around that really have little or no real value. You understand? And maybe even one of the things that's keeping you from reaching, you understand, the great summit destined for us by the great creator. So we're going to touch on LOJ, the symbology in LOJ, but we want to make a, a, a kind of a word on the Amhara and the Ormo and that whole business right there because there's a lot of confusion around that. And a lot of this confusion is, is purposely, is, is another subtle way to divide and conquer the African Zion, you understand, because the more the African Zion comes together, you understand, the more the forces, you understand, of creation, you understand, begin to line themselves up according to Revelation, according to the end times, and we're seeing all these signs of the time, because more of I and I, you understand, are recognizing the truth, you understand, and submitting ourselves to the will of God in Christ. So this is very important. So LOJ. LOJ hieroglyphically understood. That's the next part that we're going to deal with. LOJ as it is hieroglyphically overstood. So stay tuned for that.